What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 3. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving into the Bruin Mark 9 LMG. And starting it off as always, let's get into our damage profile, and with this gun, it's generally going to be a 5-shot kill. However, at longer ranges, if you mix any leg or lower torso shots in, this will now take you 6 shots to kill the enemy player, so it's a little unforgiving in the longer ranges, but up close and personal, you can shoot them anywhere in the body for a 5-shot kill. And on top of that, in that maximum damage range, if you mix 2 headshots in with 2 upper torso shots, you can get a 4-shot kill. As for a rate of fire, this is 759 rounds per minute. And it's worth noting, this is one of the few guns in the game that has an open bolt delay. And this is pretty short by default at just 33 milliseconds. And what that means is every time you pull the trigger, it will take 33 milliseconds before the gun actually fires. Now what this all means for our time to kill potential is with a 5 shot kill, we're killing in 316 milliseconds, which is okay, it's a little bit better than average for LMGs up close, but I mean it's not like a standout gun by any means, and you are going to be outgunned by most of the assault rifles and SMGs with this time to kill. And it's also worth noting, this excludes the open bolt delay, so you may want to add that 33 milliseconds to get your true time to kill potential, at least in most situations. Now on top of this, it is worth noting, if we get that 4 shot kill by mixing in 2 headshots, we will be killing now in 237 milliseconds, which is a great time to kill. After that, let's get into our ranges, and we actually only have one range drop off point, despite what the advanced stats may suggest, and this is at 29.7 meters. So within that 29.7 meters, it's a guaranteed 5 shot kill anywhere in the body, and then beyond that, it's quite unforgiving like I said, and you are going to have to make sure you're hitting all of your shots to the upper torso or arms. Additionally, when it comes to our bullet velocity, this is excellent, just like with all of the LMGs, at 810 meters per second. And now let's get into hardcore game modes, and we do have an infinite one-shot kill potential, but if you shoot players in the legs or lower torso in the minimum damage range, it will be a two-shot kill. Then let's get into hip fire, and our minimum hip fire spread when we're just standing still is pretty decent for an LMG at 3.1 degrees per second. However, our maximum hip fire spread when we start firing the gun or if we're moving while shooting, this is 9 degrees per second, which is the worst in the LMG category, and that's really saying something since LMGs in general are pretty bad in this area. So I definitely wouldn't recommend hip firing with this gun unless you're practically touching the enemy player. And now let's get into our recoil, and with this gun I'd say it's moderately accurate, it's not too crazy, there is a bit of a jump after that first shot fired, so you definitely have to be aware of that one, and it will tend to drift fairly hard toward the left. But at least throughout this recoil pattern, there is a pretty consistent recoil path, and your rounds tend to stay pretty close together. There's no crazy bounces or zigzags with this gun. As for our handling stats, our aim down sight time is very slow at 450 milliseconds, so definitely something to be aware of. And on top of this, our sprint to fire time is quite slow as well at 250 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time. Then let's have a look at our reload add time, and this is also very slow. Not quite as slow as the pull me up, but it is still very slow at 4.76 seconds. So overall, when it comes to handling stats, this gun isn't very good. And unfortunately, the same thing holds true with our movement speeds. Our base movement speed is the slowest in the LMG category at 3.9 meters per second. Our sprint speed is quite slow as well, but a little bit more like average for LMGs. And then our aim walking movement speed, this is also the slowest in the LMG category at just 1.9 meters per second. And there we go, that's going to wrap it up for all of the important base stats with the Bruin Mark 9. And while this gun doesn't have an aftermarket part or conversion kit, it does have a key attachment that I want to talk about here since it changes the gun fairly significantly, and this is the 60 round magazine. With this, I just wanted to point out that we get fairly significant improvements to our handling and mobility stats, including our reload time. Our reload add time with this attachment is now just 1.75 seconds, so a lot more along the lines of what you'd tend to see with an assault rifle. And while our aim down sight speed is still pretty slow at 400 milliseconds, a 50 millisecond improvement is very nice. In saying this though, something I didn't immediately pick up on with the 60 round mag that's actually a noticeable downside is it increases our open bolt delay to 50 milliseconds. And honestly, I do think that is a fair enough trade-off because we are getting some really significant upsides while using this attachment. And even with that open bolt delay being slower, I still really like this 60 round magazine just for the wide array of benefits that it comes with. And now that we have that out of the way, let's move into some excellent attachment combinations I've got for you guys. And we're going to start this off with my accuracy build, which is designed to be treated like a typical LMG. So hanging back, picking people off at longer ranges. It's not designed for rushing around in close quarters. But with this, I found the Komodo Heavy muzzle was the best on this. Otherwise, a horizontal recoil would get out of control. We also have the FTAC SP Angled Grip the 23 inch XRK Horizon V2 barrel, the one milliwatt quick fire laser, just to help a little bit with our aim down sight speed without having a visible laser for enemies. 
and then finally the Mark III reflector for our optic. And with this particular setup, as you can see, it is quite accurate. It's not the most accurate gun in the game, but you should be able to handle this really well, even at super long ranges. But this does come with some key trade-offs. Our aim down sight speed is a bit slower at 508 milliseconds. That's a very slow aim down sight speed, but it shouldn't matter a whole lot if you're keeping yourself really far away from your targets. Our sprint that time doesn't change at all with this build and our bullet velocity is improved a bit, but honestly, you probably won't even notice that bullet velocity improvement. Overall, this is a pretty solid setup for something like ground war if you're really trying to keep your distance or even just some of the more long range maps for 6v6. As for the second build I've got for you guys, this is my more balanced all around build. This is the typical build that I like to use with the Bruin Mark 9 for 6v6. With this, we're using the Shadow Strike Suppressor so we can stay off the radar. We've got the X10 Phantom 5 in our underbarrel. We are using that 60 round mag just for all of those handling and mobility improvements as well as reload improvements. We're using the Bruin Q900 rear grip. And then finally, once again, that Mark III reflector. I really don't like the iron sights much on this gun. And with this particular setup, it's still pretty accurate. It's about as accurate as the base version of the gun, to be honest. However, we see a lot of key improvements. Our aim down sight speed is now 367 milliseconds, which is a significant improvement over the base. Similarly, our sprint out speed is very noticeably better than the base version of this gun. Unfortunately, we are going to be dealing with that longer open bolt delay, but to me, it's worth the trade off for this particular build so I can feel a bit more comfortable getting around the map. And then of course, we are staying off the radar with this build. And there we go. That's the primary build you'll find me using with the Bruin Mark 9 if I'm using it in 6v6. Now let's move on to the final build I want to share for you guys. And I have shared this build before, or at least a similar version of this build. And this is the Street Killer build. And the reason I'm sharing a Street Killer build for this gun in particular is this is actually the best weapon in the game for taking out a lot of the higher end aerial streaks. So with this build, the key here is incendiary ammunition. This is the best ammunition for taking out streaks. We also have the Shadow Strike Suppressor on this, just so we're off the radar as we're just standing there looking up at the sky and shooting down streaks. So it's a bit less likely somebody's going to be targeting that dot on the minimap and just coming straight for you to come kill you. We once again have that Mark III Reflector, use whatever optic you want to go with. And I put the 200 round belt mag on this just in case there are multiple high end streaks in the air so that you can take multiple out without ever having to reload. Now with this, it's still a pretty accurate gun, although you don't need insane accuracy to shoot a chopper or a VTOL out of the air. Our aim down sight speed and sprint out times are very slow, so you definitely don't want to be using this outside of this particular purpose, which is taking out streaks. And the big upside with this is you can take a chopper gunner down in just 3.64 seconds. That's absolutely insane. They'll barely have any time to even shoot back at you before you take down those aerial streaks. Now, just to be clear, this is a very niche setup that I wouldn't recommend using for any other purpose aside from shooting down streaks. So I'd pop this on a class setup with hijacked IFF strobe, and that's the setup I'll just swap to if I want to take out a streak really quickly. And with that, that's going to wrap it up today's gun guide on the Bruin Mark 9. As for my thoughts on this gun, I like it. I really do like it, but I also consider it to be sort of an average to maybe a little bit above average gun in this game. And statistically, that's where it lands. It is going to be outgunned by most of the assault rifles and most of the SMGs, at least up close. But at the same time, it's definitely not a bad gun at all. I do enjoy it. I do like it. It's just kind of average. Now, of course, these are just my opinions on the Bruin Mark 9, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this gun in those comments down below. Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.